It's not often that I get to talk about how to make your Mega Drive games more fun, but here... We've got the Sega Menacer. I am a real sucker for light guns, and this thing certainly delivers. It is a light gun, so... Jack your Nana CRT, grab fistfuls of AAA batteries. I'm going to be telling you dudes why you need to have a Sega Menacer. So the time has come to unpack the Mighty Menacer. Ugh. Like any other gun from this era, this is a CRT TV only deal. So unpacking this, we do get the Menacer 6-in-1 cartridge. This isn't the one that originally came with the system, but it's a pretty close approximation. It's the Genesis version. Works fine in the Mega Drive, providing that you've got the gun. This game won't work without the gun. We also get the IR sensor. Now this thing is going to sit on top of your TV, and basically that's how it collects the signal. We also get the Menacer itself. Pretty, pretty cool looking little gun. The cool thing about this and what sets it apart from all the competition are the attachments. Shoulder braces. Ice scope. Target receptacle. guarantee and registration cards as well as another scope. So you can configure the Menacer to match your very own play style. Not like I think it's really going to give you much of an edge, but for me, aiming is for sissies. I'm all about having that well supported but unrestricted continuous firing session. Having at least one attachment also will keep the battery door firmly sealed. Very important for those very intense shooting sessions, but let me know in the comments, have you got your very own configuration or has it ever really helped you play? That's something I'm seriously curious about, especially when it comes to the scope. So we've talked about the gun, but what games have they made for the Sega Menacer? Actually, I'm not entirely sure they did make any, uh, of course they made a game. We've obviously got the pack-in, the 6-in-1 Menacer cartridge. This shouldn't really count because I had to have something, but we're going to check it out anyway. You're going to see the Menacer cartridge around. It's pretty common and it only works with the Menacer. So if you just want to try it out without the hardware, you're going to have to emulate it. But yeah, after this, I've only got one other Menacer-enabled cartridge. T2, the arcade game, and surprisingly, this is about it that's available. There's one other cartridge game called Body Count. It's a pretty hard game to come across, pretty expensive. European only release, so I'll need to make it up by checking out a few of the Sega CD light gun games one day. But yeah, I don't want to waste all my good material in this one video, so I will check them out another time, and we'll see if a light gun can make an FMV game just a little bit more fun. So, first up on the firing range, the pack-in 6-in-1 Menacer cartridge. It's like having a shooting gallery in your living room without ruining the wallpaper. As the label states, we've got six shooting games on this one cartridge. Not all of them are going to be worth talking about, but for the sake of torturing you as much as myself, I'm going to look at each of the games on this cartridge, starting with the only game that features pizza. Pest control. Basically, you take your deadly looking menacer and you use it like a bit of a flashlight to find the cockroaches, which you go ahead to shoot and explode. The further you get into the game, the quicker the cockroach is going to get. You're going to go up again to different types of bugs all after that last piece of pizza. As far as a game concept goes, I'm not exactly sure who's going to eat that pizza after the first cockroach has taken a bite, but you are fighting to save that thing down to the very last scrap. But it is a good way to see the trademark AccuSight in action. Unlike the Zapper or the Stunner, the Menacer can actually track your crosshair on screen. For some games, it's an optional feature so you can see where your crosshair is, but here and Whackball, it's actually part of the gameplay. 
So whack ball, you guide your little cursor around the screen with the menacer and you knock the ball into the bricks to change their colour. Out of all the games on here, it is the only puzzle game, which is kind of cool to see in a light gun game cartridge. So you know, I, I definitely think this game's worth checking out, but the only real issue here is probably just going to be having way too much fun, so oh, let's go on and check our Rockman Zone. Finally, we get to use the Menacer like a gun. Shoot the bad guys, shoot the innocent bystanders, I, I mean, you're not supposed to, but you could. All the people here are portrayed like cardboard cutouts. But yeah, out of all the games on the cart, this one, it's not the best, but I do like the city setting and the chance to actually blast bad guys. This is kind of what I was expecting in a light gun game. And on the other end of that fun spectrum, we have games like Space Station Defender. You get to shoot the bad guys again, but the screen stays stationary and you need to wait until the pods open up to shoot the aliens inside. The gimmick here is that to reload, you need to hover the sight over the bar at the bottom and this is going to recharge your ammo. Obviously this game's got a lot of opportunity for things to get hectic, but I always found the scale a little bit weird. And yeah, it's another Menacer game where the background doesn't scroll and each stage is going to be very, 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 very similar. So you're going to get bored quickly. And Frontline, it's a military shooter. Again, there's absolutely not much to say, but they did try and play with different perspectives for the enemy. So the ones that are further away are gonna be harder to hit, the ones that are closer are gonna be easier to hit, and you do get a variety of weapons to use. You get your missiles, and you also get your automatic machine gun, which does have unlimited ammo, but it's gonna take a lot longer to wear the enemies down. Again, this has got a lot more of what I was expecting for a game that uses a gun, but we're nearly at the end of the Menacer cartridge now, and I did try and save the best for last. So, you'll be stoked to know that I saved Ready Aim Tomatoes for the very end. This game is one of the more depressing ones, but in the best possible way. Out of the entire Menacer cartridge, we get our only taste of a Sega licensed IP. It's a bit of a holdover from the initial concept to make an actual decent Menacer cartridge with a few different big name titles, but Ready Aim Tomatoes featuring Toe Jam and Earl is clearly the highlight. These guys come with a lot of personality. There's even a good range of enemies and characters from the original game to get you a little bit excited and nostalgic. It's fun, it's chaotic, it's still a menacer game, so it's not gonna change your world, but it was a lot of fun, and it's the best thing that we've got here. What I found depressing is how well it works. We get this real glimpse of potential from both the software and the hardware that's available. It leaves you wanting a little bit more, which you're not going to find on this cartridge because that's literally it. And it's not like Sega ever supported this thing further either. So, the Sega Menacer really is just this business move by Sega to keep up with the Nintendo Super Scope. Did that matter to a young bruiser? Hell freaking no. I originally got mine for 15 bucks when I was 9 years old and I could not be happier. The only issue was, as a kid, I just couldn't afford the batteries for it all the time. But now, as an adult, with an adult allowance from my mum, Mrs. Bruiser, thank you, I can finally review this thing and tell you all about the great experiences I've had with it. Also, kind of interesting, the Menacer turns itself off when pointed away from the TV. There's no indication if it is actually turned off, which raises one massive question in my mind. Would you trust a Sega Menacer? Sega didn't. Sega didn't love it, Sega didn't support it, and I guess neither did the third party developers. If I didn't have one of these as a younger bruiser, there's no way I would have picked it up again. But. I guess when you're finally ready to graduate from the 6-in-1 packing cartridge, Arena did bring T2, the arcade game, to the Sega Mega Drive with Menacer support. So T2 totally blew me away just with how unimpressed I was using a controller. 
I think a lot of these gun games can be made a whole lot better by using an actual gun. Weird concept. I know, but unlike the Menacer cartridge, T2 does have a two-player option, providing one player does use the controller. I guess if the name Terminator 2 doesn't get your friend interested enough to play, telling him it's an arcade shooter while handing him a control pad isn't going to help either. All things considered, it's worth getting simply due to the lack of choice. It's a ruddy hard game, but the gun does make it a bit easier. T2 is also a very cheap, very accessible game, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding a copy if the Menacer is something you're really keen to invest in. I can't recommend it, and I definitely can't recommend getting a Menacer just to play T2, but I came into it with the sole purpose of playing the Menacer 6-in-1 pack-in, so finding out that I had another title in my library, T2, that worked with the Menacer was a real treat, and I've really enjoyed taking down the Terminators with the gun. And look, as far as cartridge games go, that pretty much wraps it up. There's also Body Count, which is not an easy game to track down unless you have the Menacer already. There's no real reason why you'd want to play it. I mean, it looks great, and the gameplay is really focused on that arcade shooting, which is a bit unlike games like Alien Storm, which is a beat-em-up at heart, but with a little bit of shooting thrown in. I'm pretty much only bringing up body count so I can recommend Alien Storm. This is the Master System version, still a whole lot of fun, lots of different gameplay styles all mixed together in the one game. There's also a Mega Drive version which is really easy to pick up on the Ultimate Collection or, you know, for your Sega Mega Drive. It's much cheaper. There's probably not as many aliens, but you're going to enjoy it a whole lot more, especially if you don't have a Menacer. Actually, the different gameplay styles in Alien Storm makes it really kind of interesting. There's beat em up sections, shooting sections, and the run and gun segments. And that is just something you're not going to get with a Menacer cartridge. When you're dealing with the Sega Menacer, it's just shooting all of the time. This doesn't do anything else. But, alright, just like T2, Body Count does have a two player mode, providing one of you uses the controller pad. So, that's it for the Sega base model. Three cartridges, one of them's gonna cost me more than my Sega Menacer did, but of course, there is always the Sega CD library. Feel free to recommend any really great FMV shooters. But look, FMV games have their place in history. I think they should have stayed in the 90s, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy suffering along with them. Thankfully, the Sega CD doesn't have any burn protection, so I am planning on burning a couple just to check out the Menacer on the Sega CD. The Sega CD is where the bulk of games for the Sega Menacer are, which makes it really hard to recommend the Sega Menacer. In fact, I can't recommend this. I can't recommend it at all. I'm an idiot for buying it, but man, I've really enjoyed using it. The Sega CD library was, in my opinion, the only real thing that made it a little bit unique against the Super Scope, but man, when you're bringing up FMV games as a positive, you're really clutching at straws. So the last major issue we have here with the Sega Menacer is that Mean Machines magazine wrote back in 1992, the grey here just clashes with the glossy black of the system. So when you finish using it dudes, whatever you do, don't rest near the system. Put it back in the box, put it in a drawer, put a cloth over it. Let me know in the comments, how would you handle a system colour clash because I'm really struggling with ideas right now. Anyway, thank you so much for liking, watching, commenting, and I guess at some point, subscribing. If you are after some more action-packed Sega awesomeness, why not check out a few older reviews? I'm going to recommend Predator 2, which was an awesome arcade-style run-and-gun game exclusive to the Mega Drive and Master System, packed with drugs and violence. And if you're still in that arcade mood, maybe Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Hyperstone Heist and Tournament Fighters. 
I actually take the time to compare the only Ninja Turtle games available on a Sega system and how they stacked up against their Nintendo counterparts. The results are probably not going to surprise you, but look, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more Leftover Culture.